Are you sometimes frustrated that a laptop or any other mobile device just doesn't have the computing power of a real PC? Well, I'm in the Café Coffee Teat in the Museum Kikeberg and I'm editing 4K videos on my tablet. Or I am playing current game titles. Or I am making music. I'm cheating, of course. I have my PC with me. It's not in the bag. It is the bag. A mini ITX motherboard, a graphics card and a power supply are permanently installed in the bag. A portable touchscreen monitor with full HD resolution is attached via a cable. It also fits in the bag. Just like the small Bluetooth keyboard with trackpad and a mouse. Unlike a laptop, my bag doesn't have a battery, not yet, but the computer also runs off a cigarette lighter in a car. And at home I can also connect a larger monitor and even use both monitors together. By the way, the computer is very quiet, because it only needs two fans. The processor fan and the graphics card suck the air directly from outside, which is then released upwards and through the power supply unit. I've been looking for a suitable bag for a long time. I finally bought this one on eBay. These parts are to be installed. A mini ITX motherboard with Intel Core i5, 6500 processor and a very quiet and flat fan from Noctua, as well as 16GB RAM. An MSI Radeon RX 560 Aero graphics card with 4GB of video RAM. Because the two parts are to be mounted next to each other, I need a PCIe riser cable of 20cm length. Also a 12V power supply, this one has 350 watts, and an M2 ATX power supply, which generates all the voltages that the computer needs from an input voltage of 6 to 24 volts. I exchanged it afterwards, by the way, but more about that later. I had a piece of plywood cut to the inside dimensions of the bag at the DIY store. Now the components have to be puzzled onto the board, and the cables need some room too. I also need a hard disk. I chose an SSD. In principle, this would fit next to the power supply unit, only the cables will stick out too far. But the plastic casing is only there to give it the dimensions of a 2.5 inch hard disk, so maybe it can be removed. I muster all my courage and crack it open. That is actually quite simple. And this is the actual SSD. Now it has plenty of room. To mount and protect it, I designed and printed a case that the SSD snaps into and which can then be screwed onto the base plate. As usual, the files will be available on fluxing.de. I also printed a bunch of brackets. This is the power button. First I provisionally put the screws through the motherboard to determine the position of the brackets. I then marked them with a pencil. I mixed two component glue and glued on the parts. For the graphics card I have printed parts that the circuit board snaps onto. This is also glued on.
because the parts kept moving around, I additionally fixed them with hot glue. Then I marked and drilled the holes. On the back I enlarged the holes with a larger drill bit to countersink the screw heads because I want to keep a smooth surface. Then the various parts are screwed onto the base plate. The screws are buried very deeply between all the components. So I put three nuts into the socket and put the board on its side to get the nuts onto the screws. I plug in the various cables. I should have better installed the I.O. shield right away. Afterwards it's a little bit difficult. Now I can try it on and see if it all fits into the bag. That's it for now. Next week I will show you how I finished the project. So please subscribe to the channel and if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and see you next week. Bye bye.